Let's talk about Spearman's rank coefficient. I put this here from XKCD. <laughs> I used to think correlation implied causation. Then I took a statistics class. No, I don't. Sounds like that class helped. Well, maybe. Uh, it's all about how you can be unsure. And OK, anyway. Let's look at this one here. Before we can do Spearman's rank coefficient, I want to remind you about Pearson's uh, product moment correlation coefficient, it's PMCC. Remember when we were doing uh, linear regression, if we have a bunch of data points, let's, let's say they go like this, this is X, this is Y, we were trying to force some kind of linear graph. In other words, we're trying to find out like, hey, let's, let's have a straight line pass through this data and let's try to find the equation for it. So I mean that equation, if you remember, it was in the form uh, y equals mx plus c. And we also got this thing called an r value. Remember that r equals one is like, you know, perfect. It's a perfect fit. You know, r equals zero was like a terrible fit. So something like, uh, let me show you examples of that. So like if, if r uh, was one, let's just say it would have looked like, you know, your data points would fall exactly on a line and if R was like zero, it could have been like just a random shotgun blast. It would be like like that, right? So even if we we're trying to fit a straight line through this data, well, I mean, this first note here, I mean, maybe all your data points fit exactly on this. I didn't even draw it very well because like my data points were actually varying, but they would have been perfectly on it. Whereas this one right here, they wouldn't really fit very well at all. It'd be like some sort of, you know, we don't know, it's terrible. But I mean, keep in mind this, the word linear regression implies a straight line, doesn't it? Linear, line. So what if it's not linear? Or is there some kind of analysis that we can do that works for things that are linear and that are not linear? Well, yes. And that's why we're going to talk about this. So first of all, something that's monotonic. What we mean there is that a variable always increases or always decreases. So let me show you some monotonic examples here. So I'll just show you some things here that are monotonic, and I'll show you some things that uh, maybe aren't monotonic, just to show you the difference, okay? So uh, my goal then is going to be to show you something. Let me see here. I'll just try to type that in, actually. Let's go monotonic. So let me just try to put that in there. And then what I'm going to do then is copy this because I'm going to show you some examples of things that are monotonic. And let's see how that goes. So what does it mean to be monotonic exactly? Um, I'll show you that. And maybe I'll show you an example, yeah, when it's not monotonic maybe. So I'll say not, hmm? not monotonic. There we go. So let's see what we can do. Something that is monotonic, it doesn't have to be a straight line, but it will always increase. So let's see, uh, let me think about some data points here. I could do something like, um, I mean, a bunch of data points that go like this right here, but then kind of go like this right here. Do you notice like the data seems to always kind of increase like this? So it seems to always increase. So this is something that's monotonic. So it means that when X gets bigger, Y gets bigger. It doesn't have to be to the same amount, if you get my meaning. It could be something that goes like this, actually. Watch, it can be, um, maybe it could be something that goes like this and then slows down a little bit like that. It's also okay, right? I'm just trying to show you things here that are, that are monotonic. Um, it could be things that decrease as well. So maybe we can go something like uh, this, something that goes, well, maybe not straight down, but something that goes like this, like that. Because the whole point, I mean, although these are data points, if I did a fit through these right here, they would be, you know, do you notice as X gets bigger, Y gets bigger. So this right here is always increasing. See that? So this is always increasing. Uh, this one here is always increasing. Always. So the Y value always gets bigger by different amounts, of course. But uh, this is the idea here. Here it's always decreasing the whole time. Notice as X gets bigger, Y gets smaller. Now the amount that it gets smaller, keep in mind, it's not linear necessarily. It could be linear, by the way. This is monotonic. It's increasing. Something that's not monotonic might be a bunch of data points that go, I don't know, maybe up and then like back down or something, something maybe sinusoidal or like a quadratic or something, something like this. You can say, well, as X gets bigger, Y gets bigger up until over here. But at that point, as X gets bigger, Y gets smaller. Do you see it's not monotonic? It's neither. It's neither you know, consistently increasing or decreasing. It, it kind of depends. So this is not monotonic. 
So this monotonicity is just a check of if it's monotonic or not. Now, what does that have to do with Spearman's rank coefficient? Well, everything, because we've got this thing called Spearman's rank coefficient. And we're going to use this. We're going to have, it's going to be an R value like we've seen before, except we put a subscript S, S for Spearman. Okay, this is the key thing here. So this is Spearman's rank coefficient. So we're going to use this notation now. So we've got this uh, thing we call an RS, this Spearman's rank coefficient. And it's again between negative one and one. Uh, just like R values here, you could get them positive, you can get them negative, it went down. So let's just take a look at some examples here of what might happen. So let's do, um, what if it doesn't consistently decrease or increase, then I'll say R subscript S will be zero. That's if it's something that looks like, yeah, maybe like this, I'll do like a quadratic or something, something like that. See, it's a quadratic. I'm trying to just draw a bunch of data points that sort of look quadratic. This right here could be an example of something that does not increase or decrease. So it's R value is zero, R S that is. Uh, let's see here. Now, what's an example of something where it always increases? Well, I think I've shown you that. I don't know. Maybe I'll do one so it goes like that. It just is a piece like this. Something like that right there. As X gets bigger, Y always gets bigger. So can you take a guess? What would you call that? Well, I would make this one. And in fact, that's how we define it. And now something where it always decreases is when it's exactly equal to negative one. So that would be something where, again, we don't care what the data actually does, but we just know that it's going to be decreasing. So maybe it uh, goes like this. It could even, you know, turn a little bit. So long as it's still always getting lower. I'm just trying to show you curves because they can be curvy. So this right here is something, for example, where it's always, as X gets bigger, Y always gets smaller. You see the idea here? This is, this is the key here. I think, uh, in fact, I'll put these maybe in red because these are really important here. So these right here are the important ones here. So there's this case, there's this case, and there's this case. Now, we can do these on our calculator, luckily. And the good news is this is super easy to do on your calculator. Your calculator, this is no problem. How do you do it? Well, step one, you have to get your data. So we're going to have some data uh, of some kind, and we're going to have to uh, get it in terms of X's and Y's. So what I mean by that is you're going to have, you know, X and a Y, you'll have some things like this, and, you know, you have a bunch of values you're putting in here. I don't know what this is. It could be averages, it could be test scores, it could be whatever. Now, these are actual values of X and Y. Maybe they're lengths or something like that. The important part is we have to now do ranking. So we're not just going to analyze the data itself. That would be to do a linear regression or something like that and try to get you know, um, uh, Pearson's R value. But we want to get Spearman's R value, which is all about ranking. Right? That's actually why it's called, if you look, it's called Spearman's rank coefficient. This is the key word, rank. So what we have to do, we have to start ranking data. So now we're going to say, um, you know, if something was the highest value, so I'll maybe call it like rank of X, and maybe I'll call it the rank of Y. So I have to make a new table. And there I'll just be giving, you know, like we have to still, like sometimes I call these like A and B and C and D, just to, you know, to say this is this student or this thing that we're looking at. That way, because you still want to keep track of those. And maybe like, I don't know, maybe this person here got the best score. Maybe this person got the second best. This is the third best, fourth best, and fifth best. But this thing, whatever we're looking at, maybe that one was the best. Maybe that was the second best. Maybe that was the third and fourth and fifth. So you understand we're, we're doing rankings. Now, you don't actually have to make one equals the best and two is second best and etc. You could actually do the opposite as long as you're consistent. So in other words, you can make one the worst. As long as you're consistent in both ways, it turns out I won't make a difference. And if you've got two values, let's say two X values that are a tie, let's say, I don't know, X is three and over here X is three. What you do is uh, maybe they're the top two, maybe they're the best two. Well, then I would say, well, it's between one and, uh, you know, the first place and second place. So I would say 1.5. So this is the pro tip for you is that if ever, and I'll show you an example, don't worry. Uh, but if it's a tie, you use the average. And then what you do, which is kind of cool, you just do your regular old linear regression analysis, except you do it on the rank data. In other words, you would do like on rank X, you would do some, you know, column there, you would do rank Y, you put all those ranks there. So not the values of the X's, but the rankings. And then you do linear regression. 
and then you'll get your equation. But the important thing is that r value that your calculator is going to give you is actually going to be Spearman's rank coefficient. Isn't that clever? So all we got to do, if you think about this, to do Spearman's rank coefficient, step one, start with some data, do the rankings, put those into your calculator, and do a linear regression on that. That r value your calculator tells you is actually rs. That's your Spearman's rank. So let's do it with an example. So we have a group of 10 students. They take a chemistry test, uh, and they also take a mathematics test. So let's say it's the same group of students. So this is like student A, B, C, D. Do you see? We just do this so we can identify which students. We don't start moving things around. Okay. So this is still student A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J. It's just so we give them some sort of name. So each of these are different students here. And they take a chemistry test, and this is their percentage, you know, this is their score as a percent on their chem test. This is their score as a percent on their math test. And the question might be, what's Spearman's rank coefficient? Well, first, we have to do the ranks. Do you see that? This is the whole point. Remember I said step one, start with data in X and Y. Do we have that? Yep, we got an X and a Y, I guess. Um, now we've got to do the ranking. So what does this mean? What I'm going to do is I'm going to go through now, and everywhere uh, I see a value, I'm going to try to keep track of which one is the highest rank. So let's see here. On chemistry, what's the highest score here? I think it's 79. Can you see anything higher? No. So 79 becomes the top score. All right, so I've got 79 left. What's the next highest? I think it's 75, is it? Yeah, that's the next, so that's number two. So 75 is done. Uh, after that, what's the next highest? Looks like it's 74, so that's person number three. That's the third best. See what I'm doing here? Are there any more in the 70s? Let's see, there's that one there. Yeah, so that'll be number four. Okay, how about number five? Let's see, so anybody below 70? Let's see, what's the highest in the 60s? I got that one in the 60s, and that one, and that one. So 63 will be the next, so that'll be number five. Now notice this one, though. Uh-oh, I've got a problem here. Look, I've got 60, and I've got 60. Uh-oh. See, who's the sixth place? Is it E or is it J? Does that make sense? So what I do is this. Uh, well, they're between sixth and seventh place. Does that make sense? I'm looking at this here. These are between sixth and seventh place. What do I do? Well, I make them 6.5. That's all I do. So I make this one here 6.5th place. I make this one the 6.5th place. Because I can't decide who's sixth place, who's seventh place. You could say it's a tie for sixth place, sure. But the way we do it mathematically was, ah, we'll put it in the middle. So 6.5, 6.5. So now I've used up the sixth and seventh place now. Okay? So that's sort of how we've done this. Now, now we can continue. Who's in eighth place? Let's see. So who's after 60? Let's see. Eighth place is going to be, is it 57? Yeah, that's eighth place. All right, after 57, let's see who's next. I think it's this one right here is ninth place. And that means 10th place is this one right here. Okay, so it goes 9, 3, uh, 10, 4, 6.5. Yeah, this seems okay. Now, let's do the math rank. Same way. What's the highest score in math? I think it's 78, so that's the first place. Let's see here. Who's the next best? Next best is going to be 71, I think. So that's 2. After that, is anybody else in the 70s? Nope. High 60s then. Who's in the high 60s? That one is, so that's number 3. Who else is in the 60s? Oh, we got 67, that's number four. Next highest will be 64, I guess. Looks like it, so that'll be five. Um, wait a second. No, this is the next highest. This is number five, 66. And then this is number six. Okay, good. Let's see who's seventh place. So I gotta find other people here in the 60s. This is maybe the next highest here. I think it is. Yeah, so this will be seventh. That's 61. Mm, this one here will be eighth place. That's 60. And the last two, let's see, this will be ninth place and tenth place. Okay, so it goes four, two, ten, uh, seven, five, nine, eight, one, three, six. All right. The hard part's actually done. So now that we've done all our ranking stuff, let's put it all into a list and do a linear regression. So let me show you that. I'll get out my good old calculator, and I'll get out a list on the TI Inspire, at least I do that. And I need to name this, so maybe I'll call it like, um, I don't know, maybe rank. I like actually to call it what it is, like rank uh, chem. 
you know, something like that. Rank chem, and the next one could be rank um, math. So I'll just put it like rank M for math, something like that, you know. So just so it doesn't matter, right? You can name it whatever you want. But now I'll just put in all my values here. Okay, that's going to be my goal now is to put in all these things here. So let me just go ahead and put them all in my uh, calculator here. So I'll say it's uh, 9, 3, 10, 4, 6.5. That was the interesting one, right? And 5, 8, 1, 2, and 6.5. And then on top, let's see here for math, 4, 2, 10, 7, Mm, five, nine, eight, one, three, six. Now, how do we do linear regression? You have to remember how to do that on your calculator. If you don't know, go back to one of my videos on that. But uh, linear regression, at least on the TI Inspire, I just press menu, I go to stats, and I say, give me a calculation. I want linear regression. What's my X list? I move to the right, and I say, uh, get me rank C is my X one. My Y list, I'll make it rank M. Everything else, just say go. Now, it'll give me the linear regression for this. I actually don't care about the equation so much as I care about the R value. Do you notice this R value here of 0 0.66, let's say 9? So R, S is approximately 0 0.669. There we go. So what does this tell us? Because maybe this is this is the important thing is like what can we get from this? Well, I mean we can get from this that this thing right here is I mean it's it's not strictly monotonic. Can you see that? We we can say that I mean it's not strictly monotonic, but on average I mean it's it's kind of monotonic. Do you know what I mean? On average, you know. Uh, as uh, chem increases, as a, so as a student does better in chem, you know, you could say that the uh, math increases, like the math grade increases. So it, it is mostly positive. Do so you see that because it's a positive number? If it's positive, right, because RS is positive, that tells you something that it's, you know, something going up mostly up. Keep in mind, if it was R equals 1, it would be always increasing. What does this tell you? Well, sometimes it decreases a little bit. If you weren't sure about this, you could always take a look at the data, by the way. I kind of like to look at this. So watch. I'll add a new page. I'll do data. And I'll say, give me the uh, rank C on the x-axis. Give me the rank M on the y-axis. And you'll see that. Do you see that it's a straight line, kind of? Uh, I don't know. Not even. Do you notice it mostly goes up? But you notice, though, it goes up, then down, then up, then up, then down, then up, then up, then down, then up. So it's not that it's zero. It doesn't just go crazy, like up and down. It mostly goes up, but not quite. Do you notice that? That's why I said it's on average as chem increases, the math increases, you know. As chem goes up, math goes up, kind of. But it's not great, is it? See, if it was great, it would be like one. Then it would always be going up. Then it would be like one of these uh, kind of things like this, right? Or maybe, yeah, or maybe like like that or like that. That would be if R was equal to 1. Ours isn't. Do you notice ours is a bit worse? But that's okay. That's how real data can look. Now, uh, last things, just some notes. If you change a value in the data, let's just let's just pretend you, you change one of these. You're like, whoops, I made a mistake and I changed just a little bit. If it doesn't change the rankings, that's actually nice. And this value still holds true. So as long as the data changes don't affect the rankings, no problem. So it's sort of, it's pretty robust for that. Uh, it can be used for nonlinear data, as we just saw. Uh, outliers don't affect it much. So compared to Pearson's R value, if you're looking at Pearson's R value and you have an R, uh, an outlier, that'll really pull the the graph over one way or the other. But however, with rankings, they won't really change the rankings so much usually, so it won't matter so much. And it can be used if you don't even know the data. What if someone just told you the rankings? No problem, you can do that. So that's kind of the advantage.